Understanding garbage collection. It's actually the most efficient possible way to, uh, to manage dynamically allocated memory. It's faster than malloc, it's more efficient than malloc. It takes less CPU than malloc, if done right. All efficient garbage collectors spend basically their algorithmic design effort to avoid ever looking at dead stuff. And here are things that are typically a lot worse than you want, you might think. It really will stop for about a, gigab a second per gigabyte of life set in virtually all the current production collectors except for one. And, and the other one is that when you tune things and you've managed to make your test pass by going 20 minutes without a GC that ruined your life, most likely you just move the bad thing to minute 21. A concurrent collector is a, con is a collector that does the collection work concurrently with your application. A parallel collector is a collector that uses more than one thread to do GC. Stop the world. You hear that a lot. What does it mean? It means that we perform a collection, or at least a part of the collection, with your application completely stopped. Stop the world is the opposite of concurrent. Monolithic means all in one piece, right? The opposite of that is incremental. You can do a little, stop you, do a little work, let you go. Stop, do a little work, let you go. Mostly means whatever you read after this won't actually happen. It'll only sometimes happen. Experimental. Experimental in garbage collection terms means you are lucky if it crashes. Because when you're not lucky, it corrupted your heap, it ended up with wrong math and you don't know about it. Um, a collector is conservative when it doesn't exactly know where all the references in the world are, where all the pointers are. A collector is precise when it does know where all the references are, when it does some collection work. All the commercial JVMs today are precise. There are no JVMs I know of, of any kind, that do not use a precise collector. A GC save point is a range of execution and code where we know where the pointers are. But when we say bring a thread to a save point, we mean bring it to that range of code where I know where all the pointers are. When we talk about a global save point, that means bring all the threads to a save point at the same time. Mark sweep compact example, you do A, B, and C. The first one is mark, find all the live stuff. The second one is sweep, find all the dead stuff and figure out how to recycle it. The third one is compact, move stuff around because, right? Copying collectors do all three of these as one pass. It's not three different things. A copy collector generally says, find all the live stuff, move it as I find it, put it over there. And when I'm done, the front space is empty. Copying is really nice efficiency wise, but unfortunately it needs twice the memory. Mark and compact typically need twice the maximum live set in order to fully compact, recover the thing. Twice the live set, not twice the heap. Generation collection relies on something called the weak generational hypothesis or observation. Most objects die young. For some reason, the way we write software has this quality in a virtually universal way. Whether it's 2 to 1, 10 to 1, 100 to 1, most objects tend to die young. What you try to do is separate a part of the heap that is young. You know it's young, so most things in it are dead. You choose algorithms that are only linear to the live set and avoid anything that is linear to the heap size. And by doing that, the, com the work you end up having to do in your collector shrinks with the live set, knowing that it's sparse means it's shrunk dramatically. The secret to GC efficiency, the secret to feeding RGC well is really simple. If you look at CPU percent versus the heap size, it's very easy to understand that if you have a heap size of a certain set, if you had one empty byte in, in the memory, you would spend all your time chasing it no matter what the algorithm is. If I have infinite heap size, I never ever need to collect it, that's super efficient. There's a perfect one over X line, as long as you remain linear to the live set. And basically the secret to maintaining concurrency in a concurrent collector is generational collection. Um, this is an actual person talking about, you know, how they tune GC now, you know. <laughs> because they're using. And um, this is actual stuff like, I believe, yeah, this is Cassandra on a modern server. That's the one millisecond pause line. So this is real. Uh, here's a picture of how things look like in production. If you want an application that has daily workloads and weekend loads that look like this and reacts with timeouts and failed stuff, and this is the top 2% of success rate on the left. You turn on Zing on that kind of thing and success rate goes through the roof because timeouts go away. And the way I know that whole thing on the left was 
GC related is all we did is turn on Zing on the cluster. 